it's Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost everyone. I decided I was going to make a bunch of cards using my new die and the die does this. It cuts out this shape. So the first thing I did was I made a bunch of cards featuring the don't have a lot that just got glued down so it's coming up a little bit featuring the different colors so all I did was I um, used the die and I just kept punching out uh, the different colors and then I have the same backgrounds for them so I wanted to show you um, very fast if I can how to do this so in case you didn't know you know the the easiest way to do things like this is you get your big pile of the things that you popped out of your die and then the next step is making sure that you have uh, some good glue and um, that you know where your next uh, move is going to be. I'm going to just put glue in a couple of these little spots and I have this jewel picker that I got I think I got it on Amazon for a couple dollars and it works really good for moving paper around and um, sticking it in place here comes Aggie. She's going to make a little bit of noise. Um, then I have this um, micro brush that I'm taking up any of the excess glue that I have in in these little channels. And then I find another color that will match and not be white. That's the only color you can't use is the color of your background. So, um, because it makes it blend it and you can't, you know, then you can't see anything and that's clearly no fun. And then all you're just going to do is line them up and stick them in. Now I'll put this one aside to dry. And then I'll show you another thing I'm going to do with these. I'll get those out of the way. They're all um, eight and a half inches long and five and a half inches tall. Then you score them at four and a quarter, so your card becomes four and a quarter inches across and five and a half inches tall. That's called an A2 size card. If you ever hear anybody say A2, that's what it means. Now this card, I thought what I would do is layer my um, pieces. See, my goal for these is I'm going to move them. All right, I'm going to run the tape runner down that edge like that. So now I've just got tape runner on that one edge. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can line this one up a little bit. It's going to be a little bit down from the other so that I end up having um, a little bit of um, white show through. Then I, I'm going to have to trim the edges too. Hopefully you can see that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper trimmer. There is my staples glue stick and I'm just going to go down the side in the middle anywhere I can put the glue and then I'll lay that layer onto it and since it should be a clear glue when it dries it shouldn't be a real horrible mess it still might be a big horrible mess can you see I've got all three patterns in there I know you're thinking to yourself yes yeah, Sandy I can see that ugly edge too don't worry we're gonna cut that right off so next what we're gonna do is take our paper and line it up. Okay, I'm going to do the top edge because it's the edge I think that's the straightest right now. And you really want to hold everything down. Take off. So now all we have to do is glue it to our background, which is this one. So all I need to do, I, you can use any kind of glue to do this, but now you see how we have a fourth dimension now because of the 
fourth color. See the cool blue coming through? I think that's frisky. I'm pretty happy with it. And now, because I have 50 layers of paper and they're almost all completely um, covering the background, I can glue a lot more of it down than I could before because before I had all those lines I had to worry about. Now I don't have any lines to worry about. Lay it down. And because you're using wet glue, you have some time to play with it and move it to where you want it. Put that one aside and we'll let it dry. And then we'll go back to some of our others and um, make, put some uh, sentiments on them. I'm going to put some. Uh, multi matte medium on the back of it so in case I do have a little mishap I'm going to use this as my scrap for putting it on the back and I'm going to use the little brush that comes with it to um, brush the glue on I know you're probably saying no don't do that it'll screw up your die cut maybe but I'm going with it anyway because I really just want to get this glued on There's one. I'm going to line the inside with some white paper, but for the most part, I think it looks kind of cute. What do you think? Cute? Not cute? Let me know. So what I'm going to do now, I've, this is my very last one. What I decided I was going to do is I was going to glue a bunch of these together. I think there are five of them right now. I'm going to put some of this multi-matte medium just on the edges of it because I want to glue it down but I don't want it to seep out everywhere and have a big problem with it because my goal I'm going to just hold it up and do this because it's pretty thick since I have so many pages here together uh, my goal here is to attach the um, acetate to it and I'm going to make this one into a shaker card because I thought that would be fun and a neat way to use one of these um, use this die and I'm going to do one more step before I um, glue the top sheet on it. This is going to be my top sheet. So my acetate, um, it doesn't really matter what right color markers here. I use. I'm going to tell you my colors but um, you, you use whatever color markers right. you have. Water here. based markers. That's the key. Sure and if you notice, well I'm here. using my marker on the side that of the tip. You don't want to on the back of it. I'll just wipe um, that off. Tip straight down, I or you'll end up everything down on the tip of your marker. So this, this is, is the regal rose. back, and this is the front. If you can follow that. But before I do the front, I'm going to stamp on this. I have a really fun, uh, pretty stamp that I thought would be really cool to stamp on this with, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some scrap paper and put underneath. This is a stamp that I bought on eBay. It's from Stamp Oasis. It's called Rose Background 1229K and I thought it was really really pretty and I thought if it was me I would like to have something stamped with that on mine and I have to make sure I know which is the front. This is the front. Okay so I'm going to stamp it backwards on this and I think, oh, I really would like to do markers on it. All right, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give markers a try. It is really big, and it could be a nightmare once I do this. But you know me, I live for a challenge. These are the pinks I'm gonna use. So I'm just going to start out with my lightest pink, and I'm just gonna go around my flowers with that. As I said, this could dry out and be a horrible nightmare before I even get anywhere near being done, but I'm going to still try anyway. And then I'm going to use Melon Mambo and I'm going to go around the outside of my flowers with that. Let's 
see how we do. Here's my flower. Now I'm just going to go in with some of the lighter shades and color it in a little bit so you can see that it's actually a flower. There is our top layer, and we're going to put that layer over the acetate. So we're going to glue it down just like that. I'm going to still have to trim the acetate. Oops, I forgot to wipe the acetate off. Let me do that before I go any further. The thing about the bibs is they're nice and soft, and so you don't have any real issues with... Um, scratching acetate with them. Let's lay this layer down. I think this die is really versatile and I thought it was really fun to figure out a, a few ways to use it that were kind of out of the ordinary like this one and um, so anyway I just thought it was kind of fun to try out something new for a change. Then we need to put glue on the bottom. I probably should put my beads in. Oh, I don't know which. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just going to. I think I'm going to put my glue down first. And I'm going to run a very, very thin bead around the edge if I can. So now what I'm going to do is put these in a little funnely thing. That's my key. i got to find a funnily thing. Thing. Let me see if I can do this. Wipe it off the top. And then I will get my next color and see how much of a mess I can make with them. I don't have to put a ton on. I just want to have a few in each row. But of course that's working out like I've got a thousand in each row. So what I did was I put my little beads in, that was a nightmare, and then I put the glue on as very finely as I could all around the edges, and then I'm going to try and just center it as best I can on my card, like that. Okay, I got glue on the back of it already. Could be a nightmare, we're not going to think about it. I'm not going to think about how centered it is or if it's upside down. Okay, then I'm going to just do this, and hopefully everything's going to stay in. I thought I was going to put um, another um, piece of acetate in there, but I forgot to do that. So we're going to see if this works or not. There are some beads coming out the sides, but I think that's because I had some issues with the beads uh, when I put them in, they were on the edges. I don't want to get a paper cut doing this, but you know how that goes. Yeah, the beads went everywhere. It was, you know, a usual Sandy makes a mess kind of thing. I'm going to put something heavy on this, and hopefully it will be fine. I'm going to do that while I'm um, making the sentiment for it. So let me get the sentiment and I'll be right back. Okay, I made this little banner from uh, with this 
sentiment set from My Creative Times, This and That. I really like this set. I use it a lot. And I'm just going to put some t tape runner on the back of my little banner that I made. See which way it opens. It opens like that. I think I'm just going to put it down at the bottom. I don't want it to interfere with my shaker aspect. I don't know if you can see the shaky part of it. But so far nothing's coming out of it. I you know I wiped off and so far I don't not much, if anything, not much is coming out. And if it does fall out, well then it's a surprise, you know, that they got from the card. Anyway, so um I made this envelope to go with this card and I just need to stamp it. Made this for you. That's that one. Put it right there. Then I have this one that says love 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 XO XO and then I made the holes inside so that she could write in it and then I have this um, is the washi tape that I got from AC Moore that matches the paper I got at AC Moore then there's this one that says thank you and the envelope with the matching washi and I lined the inside of that with white as well stamped it on the back then the next one says laugh out loud and happy birthday Made, stamped it on the back for you nothing on the inside but it's light stamped it on the back and there's the washi tape and then finally thank you inside lined and I made this for you I hope that you enjoyed this use of well three different uses of one die. I thought it was kind of fun and a little bit of a challenge and I hope that the girl I made these for likes them and that you'll give this a thumbs up and subscribe and please tell one friend about me on social media because I really appreciate that and thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.